monarch butterflies are a treat in anybody's garden. And if you want to encourage them to be in your garden, a good idea to provide some food for the caterpillars. This is a monarch caterpillar right here, kind of cute. Now he's gonna munch on this milkweed here, but that's what you have to have in order to have the butterflies. This is the annual insect festival at the San Diego Botanic Garden, and we've got all sorts of insects here, and a lot of people that are very interested in seeing them today. Great day here at the San Diego Botanic Garden, our annual insect festival, and we've got all variety of insects, and even things that aren't really insects, in fact, but it really does bring the people out. It's a great opportunity for not only kids, but their parents, too, to get introduced to something kind of up close and personal. These are what we call Vietnamese walking sticks, and they were basically, these are very destructive, so basically we want to keep them out, these were confiscated from one of the local colleges. Oh really? And we, this is the only population we have, and we use these because they're much more active than the Indian walking stick in the, during the day. <laughs> uh, we've been doing this for quite a while, since I know early 1990s, and uh, it's been a great, we, every year it just seems to get more and more popular, and we get a lot of vendors, a lot of people here, and a lot of exhibitors, people enjoy coming here doing this. Oh, these are Madagascar hissing cockroaches, and uh, uh, they actually have their babies are born alive. They don't uh, lay an egg capsule like a lot of other roaches. And in function in nature is to eat up dead vegetation, and what comes out the other end is plant food. <laughs> and he just jumps into it. Yeah, yeah. It's barbecue? I know. Well. It's probably pretty sensationalistic to uh, want to eat an insect, but in fact, uh, there's pretty good reasons for doing that. They're pretty high in protein. They convert plant protein to animal protein more efficiently than most of the other animals that we would typically eat. And uh, in many cultures, in fact, eat bugs. They think it's fine. And it's probably a pretty wholesome food. So here goes. I guess that was barbecue, because that's what it tastes like. It tastes like barbecue, anyway. So kids are crazy about this, though, and it's really fun to watch kids go and go, <laughs> go for it, because kids are more adventuresome than their parents in a lot of times. Did you try one of these? Well, she likes them. She likes them a lot. What did that taste like? Like a worm, huh? <laughs> Now, this is a Jerusalem cricket here that would be parasitized by the horsehair worm you're exactly. talking about. Exactly. This horsehair worm is a parasite of the Jerusalem cricket, and the life cycle starts by the Jerusalem cricket eating a little egg or something like that of the, of the horsehair worm. It gets inside its body, and then eventually the horsehair worm actually takes over the brain of the Jerusalem cricket, drives it towards a puddle of water somewhere, Jerusalem cricket dies, and then the horsehair worm comes out, lays its egg, and the whole life cycle starts over again. So, kind of alien-esque. I guess so. <laughs> One thing that makes insects so interesting is the fact that there's such incredible diversity. I mean, they're found everywhere, and they're found in every form you can imagine. We've got great displays of them here, and, uh, and we're appreciative of the support that we get for the Insect Festival from places like Lloyd Pest Control. Hey, Herb, how you doing? Hi, Julian. <laughs> see ya. Good to see you. And we've got some in here. We've got some big honkers in here. Well, he was the one that was kind of... Mamu, this is the, this is the one with the big... Yeah. Pretty fascinating. Actually, yeah, you know what? This is the big one, but he doesn't pinch very hard. Oh, I don't know why. Yeah, there you go. Take a, take a peek at him. Can I try it? You've got a bunch of fingers, though. You don't need that one, right? No. <laughs> is the queen visible in there, George? Yeah. Uh, right here. The uh, blue mark on her back. This is the queen, and uh, she spends most of her time rotating around laying eggs, uh, either on this side or the other side. You were, what, what about, can you sense different uh, things through the glass here that you were talking about, George? Or? Well, people have been putting their hand here and here, and they can tell where the nursery is, because this is warm here, and this one's cold, this is honey, and this is baby bees. Have you been around to the uh, insect festival pretty much? Yeah. Did you? Every year. You come every year, do you? What's your, what, do you have a favorite part? Well, my favorite part is seeing, like, um, actually seeing the bees. Seeing the bees, huh? Well, George, you might have a budding beekeeper here then, huh? Well, they are fascinating, aren't they? George, thank you very much. Thanks for bringing the bees. And I guess the bees are going to the zoo now. Is that right? Yeah. David, thank you. Thank you. Great two days, boy. Well, we're wrapping up here at the uh, end of a great time at the Insect Festival at the San Diego Botanic Garden. And 
Obviously, it's more than just insects that we show people here, but it's an opportunity for people to get up close to a lot of things that maybe a lot of people may be fearful of. But kind of reduce the fear factor a little bit, I think that's a good idea. A lot of these animals here, the insects and others, are the things that you might be able to find in your own backyard. And having a little bit of knowledge about them and knowing how they fit in the grand scheme of things may make you a little more respectful of them. Take care of them. Thanks.